Last week, I spent a day re-watching the Hulu adaptation, not sponsored, I wish, of John Green's first novel, Looking for Alaska. Back in 2015, when I first read the novel, I was in a moment of my life in which every single word there felt true. As teenagers, we tend to fall somewhere between feeling that the world hates us and feeling that the world isn't even aware that we exist. Like Miles, aka Pudge, I'm a skinny guy, and that on top of many other things I'm sure most teenagers can identify with. I felt Pudge's life become somehow the life I wished I was living. I must admit that when I was reading the novel for the first time, that was the first time I truly wanted to cry after reading a work of fiction. John's excruciatingly well-described scenarios made me moon for Alaska as if she was my friend. Some years ago, before watching the series for the first time, I spent a few days rereading parts of the book. I started thinking about how much I would hate a movie based on this wonderful novel. Two and a half hours wouldn't even make a dent in the underlying subjects of the book. When John announced this series, I was terrified yet hopeful. If done right, this would easily become one of my favorite book-to-screen adaptations ever. So I eagerly waited months for the release. The trailer didn't cut it, at least for me. I feared the novel would be watered down for newer generations or, even worse, make the characters and the dialogue resemble the typical rom-coms that my mother watches every Sunday. But it didn't. Although Alaska wasn't how I imagined her, we all have our own version of Alaska, and that's fine. Christine did a fantastic job, not to mention the admirable performances of Charlie, Danny, and Jay. They all felt real. The eight-episode limited series nailed the screenplay, staying true to the source material while adding some little things here and there. Those additions felt natural and believable. Exploring deeper all the main characters as well as secondary characters such as the Eagle and Dr. Hyde felt awesome. Even just seeing Culver Creek in real life outside my head was, for lack of a better word, magical. Perhaps my only complaint would be the fact that in the series it's quite obvious that Miles and Alaska had sex, or something close to that. In the book, it says explicitly that they didn't, and for a good reason. When asked about this, John said, and this is paraphrasing, that the awkward blowjob scene with Lara was needed so that later on it would contrast with Alaska's kiss. He wanted to compare a purely physical act, the blowjob, and a purely emotional one, the kiss, and how intimacy isn't necessarily dependent on sex, but love. Aside from that, the Looking for Alaska series made me feel at Culver Creek again, even though I didn't go there, and revived in me every little emotion from the book. When Alaska said, to be continued, I believed it again and hoped she would somehow come back. This video's last words are beautifully portrayed.